Welcome to this session on the Powerpack for Advanced Steel. And we're going to be taking a look at the new concrete stair macros available in the coming version. You'll find them under the Stairs and Railings palette. If I expand the palette, you'll see that a new tab has been introduced called Concrete Stairs. You'll see there's an option for single flight and multiple flight options. One thing to draw your attention to is the concrete fitter within the management tool system under your defaults. You need to make a change to this setting for the staircase macros to work correctly. So let's go and do that as the first part of today's exercise. You'll be coming here to defaults and then type fit at the bottom. Come to general, please ensure that this checkbox is enabled. And obviously load the settings into the current session. So let's come back to the macro itself and we're going to focus upon the single flight to start off with. Depending on your system setting you either see at the command line or dynamic or both. Obviously to type 0 which is the default option which is the start and the end point. 1 is length and angle, 2 is height and angle. So I'm going to press enter on the keyboard and choose the default option and zoom in to my P1. This is my first point of the stair. My P2 position defines the length, the base length that is, and the vertical height of the stair. I then have an option to choose the bias position of the stair. <laughs> Zero is right stringer, one is center, two is left. I'm going to choose zero, which is the right option. Now I can enter the width as the dialog changes. So I'm going to enter a value in here to control the stair width. We can see that the stair is generated and then the dialog appears. If we come into the geometry tab, we can see here some options that control the base length, the height of the stair, the width of the stair, and obviously this value here, which is number five, which is the offset. Now, it didn't come in based upon what I actually wanted to achieve, and that is fairly typical. So the first setting you can adjust here is this height value here, which is actually your overall rise less one tread. So if we change the value in there, and then if we come down into field number five here, this offset value, and we're going to change that, and this is the height of the first tread. We can now see that the tread form for the concrete stair has been created to represent to P2 at the top from the springing point of P1 at the bottom. If we just change here to look at this, this is called type. How the stair is calculated is using this formula mechanism here. If we uncheck that, if you wanted to change from that value, you could change from that value if you so wished. And the same for the going. And then it would recalculate the stair based upon those values. I'm going to leave it checked to the default for today's exercise. Returning to the geometry tab now, I just wanted to move down into here and you can just see that there's a depth type here and it says calculated. That's because it's using a example tread type. You can see this shown in this blue element here. This is a basic folded tread pattern that may be assimilated into a steel staircase that may be used to actually make the concrete stair from. Or you may just be using or representing an architect's concrete stair and checking his basic setting out before you start setting out your steel stair. And you can figure out from this where you might need to have the underside of the stringer edge, for example. So in this example here, value 7, tread offset, is working from the underside point of this tread profile here. And at the moment, we can see that it's not at the desired position. So we can come in and we can change the value in the dialog here. And that extends or moves the underside level of the concrete stair downwards. 
Similarly, if you wanted to come back to depth type and change this to value, you'll see that field 6 becomes available. And again, if you want to make this a nice round figure, you can adjust the figure in there and it will adjust it and adjust the position. I'm just going to flip it back to calculated for today's example. Obviously, if you wanted to change the width also of the stair, you could affect that in field number four. I'm not going to do that today, but you could adjust that if you so wished. And one final thing to remind you again, actually, there's a little information button here about the working of the stair. And obviously with the fitter arrangement and it being changed. So let's just change to the landing tab here and we can see that it comes in region top and it's disabled at the moment. So let's just zoom in a little bit to that area. So we do have landings at top and bottom and we'll come on to the bottom one later, later on. But let's enable the top landing here. And as you turn it on, you can see this slab element appears at the top of the stair. It has a couple of basic options here, so you can adjust the length value, which will move the edge out towards the right. And similarly, you can control the width here. So if you change the width value, you'll see it will extend out. In this case, it's gone to bias to one side. Now, depending on the hand you draw the stair in, it says left or right, but it goes one side or the other. So you can change the bias position there, flipping it backwards and forwards. For this example, I'm going to leave it on the default. The thickness value here is actually linked to another element in the next tab here called the stair header. If you actually change this value in here, it will change the thickness of the, stack of the actual concrete landing slab. So let's just pop that back to 200. There is an offset value in here that can also be introduced. So if you wish to drop the landing down from the P2 position, the top nose position, you can offset it, placing a negative measurement in here will move it downwards. You may wish to do that if you wish to introduce an extra screed level or something to get back to your nosing position. I'm going to put it back to zero. <clears throat> Moving on again to the next tab, which is the stair header. This is this form at the top of the staircase here. And we already discussed the height value being here and adjusting that and it obviously ensues the landing value number three here. But one of the other things you can do is you can adjust this thickness value here, number three, and you, sorry, number two, and you can adjust it here. So if we change the value in that, we'll see that it increases the thickness at the head and moves also the landing element across. The landing size itself does not change, that is still controlled by the variable length one here. So that's the top landing detail completed. And if we just move down there, we'll look at the stair foot at the base of the stair. Now, presently at the moment, it's coming with a default value. It's enabled and it's got 200 millimeters written in here. So we can change this value in here if we so wish, reducing it. And that'll go down actually to what was the height of the first tread. So let's just put it back to 200 and we'll see it drop down under to that value there. There are other options in vertical and horizontal. So let's take a look at the vertical one first of all. And we can see this introduces another beam stroke foot element at the base of the stair. It has a height value which you can see is entered here and you can adjust it and it will reduce that down or increase it as you so wish. So let's just put that back to that initial value that we started with there. Another little thing to note here is there is a second drop down menu here that says calculated or custom. Calculated means it's linked to the underside 
of the concrete flight here at this intersection point. If you change it to custom, the length field becomes unlocked. You can now adjust this figure if you so wish to pull that across, however you wish to do it. Let's just flip it back to calculated and we can see that length two field is now greyed out. Let's just change to horizontal and we'll see again a change in the base foot arrangement here. Now at this point it's actually locked to the underside of the stair. And we can change the length if we so wish. So here I'm going to make this a different length. I'm going to adjust it. You can see it extend out. I'm going to reduce it back quite drastically there and pull it back in. The thing to watch out for is the height actually works from the underside here. So increasing this value will actually move the top face upwards. Let's just come back here and put it back to the cut value and change the figure back to what we started with at the start of this exercise. I just wanted to pop back to the landing zone now because we've looked at the stair foot. But what we can also do is come to the bottom landing here. Again, you have options here to enable it or copy from the top. So I'm just going to enable it in this case. Again, you can see you can enter a length value in here. And we'll see that extend out. We can also change the width value if we so wish. So we can type a different value in there. And obviously the width will extend out. Obviously the bias position can be flipped from one side to the other. And maybe to make it look nice as well, you can come back into the stair foot and you can adjust the value in there to increase this downwards. Also, just to pop back to the bottom landing, there is an offset value available in here as well. So if you so wish to, you could drop it down as well. And obviously you can go back and adjust the stair foot arrangement. Just going to put that back to the default value in there. So with that, you can see the basic arrangement of a staircase flight using the concrete stair single flight tool. The single flight tool can also be used in combination with the multi-flight tool, which we'll move on to next in the next part of the session.